this is Critical Motion from the Chiefs, and today in episode three, we'll be looking at recoil control, gun choice, positioning in combat, and just many more ways that you can level up your game in PUBG. Let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna be discussing some of the basics of aiming. I think most players should play at a range between 400 and 800 DPI. It's just generally the go-to sensitivities for FPS games. Another pretty simple tip is you should always crouch when you can, if you're going into a spray. So this is much easier to do if you're crouched. And it's, it's a very simple thing to crouch. If there's a player here who doesn't know I'm here and I want to confirm the kill with a spray or something, I am more likely to kill him. Like instead of doing this and shooting while I'm standing, it's better for me to actually take the time to move forward to where I can crouch and shoot him. After doing your DPI, you can also adjust your in-game sensitivity. I personally use default because on 400 DPI, this is slow enough for me and I just, I really like it. But if you're, if you're finding you want to be more accurate, you can adjust the sliders. I think it's always best to have an even uh, ratio on your horizontal and vertical sense. Some people really overcomplicate spraying in PUBG. Just to show the difference of recoil, like if, if I don't control the gun at all while I'm crouched, it does this. So it's really like, there's not much deviation um, left and right. So compared to me actually trying to shoot someone. At the end of the day, uh, when I spray stuff, all I'm really doing is pulling my mouse downwards in PUBG. Uh, there's no like, I'm not trying to track a pattern which you might see in other games. It's, it's literally just pulling my mouse straight down and being comfortable with my sense. And also, just, it's just muscle memory. Like any adjustments left and right is pretty much just muscle memory from playing so much, more than actually learning or identifying the spray pattern of the gun. It's definitely worth noting, obviously, the different attachments. I, I personally prefer the vertical in all cases. I think the vertical is the most consistent grip in the game on pretty much every gun. If you feel like you've lost your spray, like you start spraying and you lose control or something, you just stop and you start again. Uh, I think some people like commit to their spray too much. Like they actually try to empty their entire mag. This is especially true with the AK. The trick to using the AK is 100% knowing when to stop your sprays and start again. I see a lot of newer players think the suppressor is like the greatest attachment in the world. I think it's just because it's kind of cool. Uh, it's cool to have a suppressed gun. But what most people don't realize is the, uh, the compensator is always the best option when you're trying to re uh, control recoil. Uh, you always choose a compensator over a suppressor on an assault rifle. Now we're going to talk about one of the most important things in PUBG and how to win your gun battles that a lot of people don't understand. It's what's known as peeker's advantage. And basically the idea is you always want to be the one peeking because it gives the opponent less time to react. The average player when holding these stairs, if someone is coming, would actually hold the angle like this and be looking the entire time. And this isn't that bad, but if they don't know you're like in the area and you're gonna surprise them, it's okay, it's fine. You've got your shots ready to go. But if a player like you're already in combat with knows you're here and they're the one who's gonna be coming around the corner first, uh, you never actually wanna be holding the angle. You wanna wait until you're the one who can be the aggressor on a free kill basically. So you're using sound entirely and then you're peeking and shooting. And this pretty much makes it really hard for them to react to you. This applies throughout the entire game. In a late game situation around a rock like this, if they're coming towards you and they know you're there, you, you don't want to be doing this. You don't, do not want to be holding the angle if they're coming around this corner. You want to be coming around as they are already like in position to shoot. If you manage to learn to uh, use Pika's advantage to your advantage as much as possible, you will just win so many more battles in PUBG. So we're going to talk about gun choice and maybe what I think are the best guns, but also the guns that the average players can excel with as well. Start with the AK, which everyone knows. It's one of the best all-round guns for any player to use, really. Uh, it excels close range, but I actually think it's at best around from me to this wall. And it's just short bursts of spray, really. Uh, just that can down a player. On Sanok, you will also find the QBZ, which is a very consistent gun as well. It's fairly easy to use, even with 
low attachment. It's probably one of the main guns you'll find on this map, and it's definitely worth, definitely worth using. Uh, the M4 is probably the most straightforward gun in the game. Uh, the recoil is definitely fairly easy to control. You can empty whole mags without having to stop because the recoil is just very controllable. SMGs are actually kind of valuable. The Vector is now a pretty, pretty good gun on this map. It actually has higher DPS than a lot of the assault rifles. You just have to be close enough to use it. In Red Bull Fight or Flight, you'll also find that there's much more crates and these crates in this mode are double the gear than usual. And speaking of best guns, the, the crates generally do provide the best guns in the game. The Orm is by far the best bolt action. It can uh, down level three helmets in one shot. And my favorite gun of the game is the MK14, which is a DMR that also can be automatic. Uh, level three armor is also just extremely important in PUBG. Level three helmet is probably the best survival item in the entire game. So going for a crate can be extremely worth it, but it's always gonna be a risk. I hope some of those tips helped you choose your gun in PUBG. Make sure you check out the previous two episodes, but coming up, we'll be checking out positioning and map knowledge. For more details on Red Bull Fight or Flight, you can check out the link below.